Paul Tracy has got to be one of the biggest and best personalities in the history of American open wheel racing. That might be a controversial opinion, but I don't really give a shit because his antics and cart were matched by no one. He was as talented behind the wheel as he was on the mic, and had he not become a racing driver, he would have made a killing career as a wrestler in the WWF. Funny I mention that actually, because wrestling actually ties into my favorite Paul Tracy moment. On one day in Canada in 2006, a world class driver would dress up as a wrestler, all in the name of giving a big middle finger to his biggest rival at the time. This is a story of Nacho Libre Tracy. Second on the main side, and Bourdain gets by, here's oh, Tracy. No, no, no. Tracy to the inside, oh, he hit him. Contact, contact. The Paul tracy sebastian Bourdain rivalry had been going on since 2003. It had its flashpoints like the Toronto 2005 incident on pit exit, but none were as pivotal as the Denver crash. Afterwards, the two sides weren't happy in the slightest bit. He's out of the car and he's done. He wants Tracy. Oh boy, here we go again. He wants Tracy. He wants him. Is this a replay of San Look. Jose? He wants him. Don't touch him. Oh! Oh! Well, no, I wasn't surprised. Obviously, it was the last corner, so, uh, you know, if he's that desperate for two points, then, you know, those, that's the risk you take. You know, I don't feel sorry for him. You know, he, uh, he took me out of five races last year, so, you know, I guess paybacks are a bitch. What about the pushing? Were you surprised at the end of the race to see Sebastian come across the track to you? No, but I'd like to see him come with his helmet off, and then we could have a real match, so. Despite Paul himself being a Canadian, the French-Canadian newspapers were by no means happy with the, the French guys like to keep their helmet on. Quote, the media wasn't very happy and neither were the Canadian fans, so when the Champ Car Series would show up to Montreal two weeks later, the fans were ready to show their disdain towards Paul Tracy. Unfortunately for them, Paul Tracy was ready too. Him and his team showed up rocking Quebec hats, t-shirts that showed Bourdais as Chicken Little with a big blue four-size shoe ready to stop on him. The Sugar Ray Tracy shirt did a very good job of pissing people off as well. Paul spent the entire weekend taunting the fans and acting like the biggest ass asshole we could. I know I've made a lot of wrestling comparisons, but during this weekend, Paul Tracy and the Forsyth team were just like D-Generation X in the WWF, who spent the majority of their on-screen time acting as raunchy as possible. Some people hated it, others loved it, but goddamn was it not funny. Paul Tracy's antics had already solidified his status as a perennial anti-hero in IndyCar, but during the driver's parade, he put the cherry on top. Nacho Libre Tracy stole the show, the same guy that looked like this this in the early 90s became such a good heel and cart that some people couldn't help but love him.